Let's go to Alex from Orange County. Alex from Orange County, you're on the air. Hey, David, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Awesome. So um, I remember you said every midterm election, if the if the president wins, the opposing sides um, also win. Um, why do you think that? No, happens? no, no. So that's that's not always the case, but that's it's often the case. Not always. OK, um, is, is there a reason why that happens? Do people just stay home and assume, oh, we're all good or something like that? Yeah, I think it's a combination of things. So I think when when you have one party win a presidential election, um, and then you have a midterm two years later. There's a couple different things that are going on. One in general, there's a lower turnout in midterms than there is in presidential elections. So by by its very nature, that means that uh, whoever is more motivated in the midterm has a better shot at being able to turn the election in their favor. And uh, what motivates people to get out and vote? Well, it's their opponent winning. So when you see one party win in a presidential, it will often be more motivational to the opponents of that uh, a person, to the, the the members of the party that is in opposition position to the winner of the White House. And so you'll see them come out in larger numbers in the following midterms. That's typically the way it goes. I don't know that that's the way 2022 will go, though. Um, um, OK, uh, um, can I ask you one more thing? Of course. Um, um, after the 2020 elections, do you trust um, poly data at all, even though like it really felt like um, Joe Biden really had this in the bag? But we were all pretty nervous, you know, when election day happened. I mean, listen, um, the the not the, the the polling data certainly was skewed more in the Biden direction than what ended up being the actual outcome. Now, Joe Biden was projected to win the popular vote and he did. And Joe Biden was projected to win the electoral vote, and he did. But there's no denying that the margin was not what many expected it to be, including in states like Wisconsin, as as an example. So, you know, the trusting polling data is very black and white. I think we have to understand the limitations of polling, but at the same time, understand that um, uh, it's uh, it, it is not as precise, precise as many of us would want. And as I spoke about with David Shore not long ago, he pointed out that the idea of we now have such politicization of polling that there are certain populations that will respond to polling in a certain way and that can skew the results. We have to be we have to account for that. That's a real thing. Oh, OK, well, um, that'll be all, David. And thank you for taking my phone. My pleasure. Great to hear from you. Really appreciate it. Uh, and then why don't we talk to uh, how about we speak to Antonioni from Chicago. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Hey, can you hear me, David? Yes, I can. Yeah, no, that's that's correct pronunciation. Love it. Um, big fan of the show. Thanks for taking the call. Thank you. So most of what I have to ask is about um, COVID relief and budget reconciliation. Okay. I kind of, okay, so I guess I need to refresh a little bit on the current current status and the next action step. So Right now, we're trying to pass COVID relief through budget reconciliation. Yes. Which that passed the House, correct? Uh, yes, it did. Now, you know, now you have me doubting where it stands right now. Yeah, it yeah. passed. It and passed I didn't the mean house. to put you on on spot here because I realized there's so much going on. Yeah. And there is always a new update. So, like, if you don't know one of these questions, like, I totally get it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not up to speed as to it. I know that Democrats b- believe they need to move forward without Republicans. And that that clearly is the case. I actually am unsure where the bill is right now. Yeah, I don't know if it passed the House or not, because. I thought it did. And then there was still debate, you know, about yeah. the income threshold that who's going to get the, uh, you know, the relief. Indeed. So I was like, OK, maybe it didn't pass the house. Um, anyway, so I guess what I'm going to is I really wanted to know your opinion on do you think reoccurring relief is even going to be a thing or is this going to be one of the I mean, if you had a guess, I know it's really hard. We're in a pandemic. You don't yeah. know how this is going to play out, but. We're seeing how long this process takes and it's, I guess it's not too long, you know, it's expectable. It's been a month like since Biden's came into office. Um, but it's for that 1400 and, you know, and there's some progressives fighting for $2,000 reoccurring. And I just don't like, how long is like, what's going to be the process for that? Because I know we have to get this 1400 yeah. through, through budget reconciliation. So what would the process then be? to get another 2000 
It you're you're exactly right. Uh, I, I hate to rain on anybody's parade. I don't think recurring payments are going to happen. And uh, yeah. there are people that love the idea of sort of like pandemic basic income in a sense. Um, mm -hmm. If things uh, particularly, it, it, as you're pointing out, it's a lot of work just to get this $1,400 done. And yeah. I hope that we, we start to recover from the pandemic, both from a health standpoint and an economic standpoint. And if that happens, uh, I don't know. I don't even think that you're going to have Republic, uh, Democrats in the Senate going for recurring payments. So I, I want to be as real with the audience as I can. I don't see it. I don't see it happening. I don't see it either. And I, no, I agree. Yeah. Um, and, do, and I guess one of the last questions that has to still do with this is there's there's all this talk about, you know, there's a lot of Democrats were fighting to lower that threshold to 50K yes. um, for the relief. Do we, who, who are they? Because I, I, Joe Manchin is kind of like, you know, the mascot for them, but I don't know who the other ones are. And I guess they're not, they're, they're going anonymous. Is that seem to be what the issue is? I don't have the list in front of me, but this is exactly what we were talking about when Joe Biden won, where we were saying, you know, if we're assuming everything will be 50 50 and then Kamala gets it through, we're forgetting that there are occasionally Democrats who don't just sign their names to what Joe Biden wants or to what the bulk of the Democrats in the Senate want. And and we are seeing that. Yeah, I'm against, obviously I just I don't know that it needs to be said. I'm against lowering the threshold to 50,000. Yeah. OK, I mean, that, that's it. And I, um, you know, I hope I saw how like Kamala was interviewing with, you know, the newspaper where Joe Manchin's from or whatever, trying yeah. to push him to get that through. And I I hope there's more tactics like that to push these um, people that are more center to the left in this time. Certainly. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much for taking the call. I appreciate it. All right. Antonioni from Chicago. Great to hear from you. Uh, we're going to go to a break. Sorry, I wasn't able to get to everybody. I do my best, but I can never get to everybody. Uh, there's always more. We will take a quick break and be back with more right after this. 